All right, we're going to start uh, with more on linear transformations. Uh, let's suppose we have a transformation T, and uh, suppose that all you know about T is that the vector 1, 0 gets mapped to 2, 0, 1, and you know that 0, 1 gets mapped to this vector. Um, so just from looking at this, you can tell that T maps R2 to R3. So we're taking vectors in R2 and we're mapping them to R3. But uh, how could we find a general rule for how to determine uh, T of uh, just a generic vector X? So T of X1, X2 for any vector uh, X1, X2. Well, to uh, get this, just based on the information that we have, uh, we need to use uh, the properties of a linear transformation. So remember, we talked about these last time, um, that uh, T of U plus V is T of U plus T of V, and uh, T of a scalar times a vector is that scalar times T of the vector. So let's uh, examine what we have. Notice that we can write a generic vector x1, x2 as x1 times 1, 0 plus x2 times 0, 1. Now remember, on backwards, we know about, uh, we know what we get when we apply t to 1, 0, and we know what we get when we apply t to 0, 1. So keep that in mind. So we're going to write x1, x2 as x1 times 1, 0, x2 times 0, 1. So then I'm going to apply t to both sides of this equation. So I'll have t of x1, x2 is equal to t of this stuff here. Now, since t is a linear transformation, t of, this is like t of uh, uh, a plus, or u plus v, if you want to think of it like that. So we can break it up into t of u plus t of v. And then uh, this is like a constant times a vector, so t of a constant times a vector, we can rewrite as that constant times t of that vector. Okay, so we end up with this, and we know what t of 1, 0 is, it's just this vector, and we know what t of 0, 1 is, it's this vector, so here's what we end up with. And uh, so notice this is just a linear combination of these two vectors, um, which we can rewrite in this form as a matrix with those columns times uh, the uh, components x1, x2. So notice that we've written t of x, okay, generic vector x, as a times x. So now we have uh, the matrix with which to apply the transformation. And as you can see, that matrix is simply uh, the uh, the vectors that you get when you apply t to the vector 1, 0, and 0, 1. All right, now those columns that we just looked at, 1, 0, and 0, 1, those are special vectors. Okay, uh, and to talk about that, let's first define the identity matrix. So the identity matrix is an n by n matrix, okay, so it's square, and we write it as i sub n. Okay, and it has ones on the main diagonal. Main diagonal is like the 1, 1 position, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4. Okay, uh, so it has ones down the diagonal and zeros everywhere else. So here are a few examples. I2 so 2 by 2, got ones on the diagonal. I3 is so a 3 by 3, ones on the diagonal, zeros everywhere else. And here's I4. Okay, so I sub n is just an n by n identity matrix. Now notice I sub 2. You see those columns that we were just dealing with, those vectors 1, 0, and 0, 1. So they are the columns of the identity matrix. Okay, And they are so special that we give them their own names. We call them E1, E2, so forth, to E sub n, depending on what n is. So this column here would be E sub 1, this one E sub 2, in a 2 by 2 matrix. Here, for 3 by 3, this would be E sub 1, this E sub 2, this E sub 3. Okay, so the, the, uh, what they actually are depends on the size of the matrix that we're talking about. And there it is with 2 by 2. Okay, now 
as we saw in the previous example, if you know um, T of E1, T of E2, and so forth, if you know what you get when you apply the transformation to these uh, columns of the identity matrix, then you can compute T of X for any vector X. Right? That's what we showed in that earlier example. Okay, so here it is written in a little more formal manner. If we have T that maps Rn to Rm, then there is a unique matrix A such that T of X equals AX. In fact, A is the M by N matrix whose Jth column is the vector T of EJ, where EJ is the Jth column of the identity matrix. Okay, and so if you think back to the example we just did, this is exactly what we came out with. We came out with our matrix A was T of E1 and T of E2, because we had a two by two example. Okay, this matrix A is called the standard matrix for the linear transformation T. Okay, so it's a special matrix. Now, we're interested in determining conditions under which a transformation has an inverse. Okay, so that means if you have a transformation that maps Rn to Rm, then given some B in Rm, can we find the find an X in Rn that maps to that B? Or can we find X such that T of X equals B? Okay, well let's go back to our uh, uh, functions just defined on the real numbers first of all. Okay, so before uh, we looked at the function uh, f of x equals x squared. All right, so, and this is what it looks like. Now, a couple things to notice. One is that, um, that you never get a negative number, right? When you plug in any x, no matter what x you plug in, since we're starting with real numbers, so number, no matter what real number x you plug in, you always get a non-negative value. Okay, so keep that in mind. And also note that um, we can get the same y value. So if I drew a horizontal line, I would hit uh, a couple of uh, places on this graph. So for a given y value, we've got uh, a couple different x values that can produce that y value. So keep that in mind. All right, f. Okay, f of x equals x squared that we just looked at is not invertible for two reasons. One, there exists y in R, okay, so there's some real numbers for which there's no x such that f of x equals y. Okay, there's no x such that x squared equals y. Okay, so consider y equals negative one, right? We cannot come up with a real number x such that x squared equals negative one. That means that there are values in the codomain that are not in the range, right? The codomain here is the real numbers, but the range for this uh, function is all non-negative real numbers. So we can never get a, uh, a negative number when we apply this function. So we say that this function is not onto the real numbers. Okay, there are real numbers that don't get mapped to. All right, so I'm going to define that term in just a minute, but I want to give you a, a, a example, something that's pretty easy for you to, to grasp. Okay, so I said f is not invertible for two reasons. Here's the second one, um, that there exists y and r. Okay, so there exists real numbers y for which a squared is y and b squared is y, but a and b are not equal. Okay, that and that's that horizontal line thing I was talking about earlier. So for example, if y is 4, we can get that with 2, because 2 squared is 4. We can also get there with negative 2, because negative 2 squared is 4. So if we were trying to get an inverse, right, if we started with 4 and we wanted to know um, how did we get there? Well, we don't know because it could have been from 2 or it could have been from negative 2. So we say that this function is not 1 to 1 because of this reason. Okay, so here's a little more formal way to look at it. We say a transformation from Rn to Rm is onto Rm, 
okay, onto the codomain if each B in RM is the image of, or another way to think of it is, is mapped to by at least one X in RN. So every B in the codomain is mapped to by at least one X in the domain. So every B gets mapped to. Okay, so this means that no matter what vector B you choose from RM, there's some X that maps to it. So for every B in RM, there's some X such that T of X equals B. And since T of X equals A times X, this means that for every B, there's some X such that A times X equals B. Right? If there's uh, an X such that T, X, T of X is B, then it has to be an, uh, the same X that makes A times X equal B. Right? Now, when is it true that no matter what right-hand side you have, uh, you'll always have a solution? Well, that's true when you have a pivot position in every row of A. Okay, so if there's a pivot position in every row of A, then the transformation will be on to. Okay, let's talk about one to one. Transformation from Rn to Rm is said to be one to one if each B in Rm is the image of or is mapped to by at most one X in Rn at most one. So remember back to the function f of x, f of x equals x squared. Um, this wasn't true because you could get to four from two and from negative two. So there was a, uh, an element in the, the range that was mapped to by uh, more than one element in the, in the domain. So it wasn't one to one. Here, one to one means each b in Rm is mapped to by at most one X in Rn. So that means that for each B in Rm, there's at most one vector X such that T of X equals B. Okay, so that means that um, since T of X equals AX, uh, if we look at the system AX equals B, it can't have an infinite number of solutions because then there would be more than one X that maps to that B. And if our system can't have an infinite number of solutions, that means it can't have free variables. Okay, so x equals b can have no free variables. And uh, if it has no free variables, that means there must be a pivot position in each column of A. All right, so the transformation is one-to-one -one if there's a pivot position in each column column of A. All right, so one to one, there's a pivot position in each column. On to, there must be a pivot position in each row. Okay, so that's how you can keep straight one to one and on to.